Hi, Brian Burkhardt here with Saddle Hills Leathercraft and I want to show you how I use gel antique to go from a stamped image like this to something that looks like this afterwards. In this case, a leather hat patch with a logo on it. So I use a, a six ton shop press to um, imprint the leather, the cased leather with this reverse image of the logo, 3D printed stamp. And um, then I use EcoFlow Gel Antique. I really like the way the tan works. Tan and Briar Brown, those two seem to work best if you're using just antique without any stains or anything, uh, without any resist. If you use the some of the others, like the dark brown, everything ends up being dark brown. You don't see a nice contrast afterwards. Your image doesn't really pop, but the tan and the briar brown work really well for this. So I use a sponge, a uh, sponge and a tray with some antique in it, and just gently put it on covering everything, making sure the antique gets into all the deeper areas. And then you need to have a block, a smooth, a smooth block of wood and a paper towel. And I make sure the paper towel is nice and flat on the bottom so there's no raised areas in it. And then completely flat just one swipe in one direction and then with the clean end of the paper towel one swipe in the other direction and that's it won't worry too much yet about getting all the antique off the raised areas we'll let this dry now and then I'll show you how to lighten up the raised areas without pulling any of the antique out of the stamped impression the antique has had a chance now to to dry. What I do now is take a sponge again, a moistened sponge. I like to add just a little bit more moisture to the surface that I'm going to be using to clean off the antique off the raised areas. Now you have to have the right moisture content in the sponge, it takes a little bit of practice, and the right amount of pressure. If you push too hard you end up getting into the antique that's down in the impressions and loosening some of that and lifting it out. Um, if you don't have enough pressure, it doesn't take some of the antique off of the raised areas and don't get as nice of a contrast. So I'll just show you how I do it very lightly. And then again, clean paper towel on the block of wood. Now it's taken off the antique from the raised areas and gives you a very nice contrast. I'll let this dry now and then show you how to how I add the leather bomb. So now it's dry and I've also rounded the corners and beveled and burnished the edges. As a finish, I one of the things I like to use is Phoebing's leather bomb with atom wax. You do have to be a little careful with it. <clears throat> I don't shake it very much because it gets lots of bubbles in it and if you have bubbles in the leather bomb when it dries you'll see those afterwards as little dots and it's almost impossible to burnish those out of there later so I use a sponge just need very very little on your sponge and just a couple of passes one pass really just across and you can see it's kind of soaking into the leather already. So I just let it soak in. It only takes a couple minutes to soak in nicely. And I do let it dry for a few minutes before I buff it. Uh, I have one here that's already been drying. So I'll bring this one over. So it's got the leather bomb on there, but it hasn't been buffed yet. So it's still fairly dull. And I just use a, an old cotton cotton rag. This, I've been using this one for probably about three years. And with quite a bit of pressure and 
It doesn't give a high gloss, but it does give a nice satin kind of a sheen to it. So, and, and you can tell nothing comes off of the antique. So this is how I like to finish these things.